Hi guys and welcome to another Elementor video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. Well we've got a little hover effect for you today if you look at those little text boxes there. When I hover over they're going to get that double border effect going. And it's sort of animated I've got it growing from 20% to 100% and it's taking about three quarters of a second. We're doing a bit of coding for this today, but don't let that put you off. Any code that I write, I'll put below the video as usual, and you're welcome to use it. And that's a nice little feature to have on your site. So let's get started. I've actually got this page open with my Elementor editor here. So let's just get rid of this row and we'll start from scratch. So I'm gonna add a new row. I'm going to give it four columns and this will work with any module you like. I'm just using a text module for the example today. You can give the class that we're going to create to any module to have those double underlines appear. So I'm just going to grab a text, edit, text editor module and let's split it up into a title and a bit of text. So that top bit. I'm going to make that a heading two or heading three perhaps will do it. Now let's just capitalize that one. Okay, well, we've got our little, let's get rid of that title and a bit of text right there. I'm going to do a minimal bit of styling on it today. I'm going to just put the text in the center there. I'm going to add a bit of padding all round. I'm going to give it 30 picks. As long as you've got that little chain checked, it'll do all three at once. Great, that's all I'm pretty much going to do with this. Now I'm going to give it a class name so we can actually target it with some CSS. I'll just put a little gap in there. There we go, great. So to target it with CSS, I've got to give it a class name. Still on the Advanced tab, CSS Classes. I'm going to give it the class of D B R D for double border. You can call yours what you want. It wants to be unique and it's a good idea if it means something to you. That's kind of my shorthand for double border. Okay, let's update this. Now we've given it a class name so we can target it with CSS today. We're going to use our theme customizer to write our CSS. Anybody that doesn't know how to get to the theme customizer, go down to your dashboard to appearance and then customize. That will take you to this page. You need to go down to the bottom to the additional CSS panel. And this is where we can write our CSS. Let's just refresh this because I think we're looking at the old version here. OK. Well, there's our little element that we created there. And we know it's got a class of DBRD for double border. So let's add our class. All classes have a dot or a period in front of them. So it's D, B, R, D, double border. And we're going to create our little underlines using some pseudo elements. So right after our class name there, I'm going to put two colons and the word before. Then I'm going to put a comma. I'm going to copy that class and before without the comma. I'm going to drop down. I'm going to paste it in below and I'm going to change the before to an after. That way we're affecting both the before and the after pseudo classes there. Now we can open and close some brackets and we've got to create some content where we can hold our little borders. So we're going to say content colon. I'm going to open some inverted commas. There we go. Now I'm not going to put anything inside those. Just can put a semicolon and we'll move down to the next line of code. I want my borders to be about four pixels high, so I'm going to say height. I know you can't see anything yet because we haven't actually given it an entity or a color or anything that you can see, but we will do in just a moment. Width wise, I'm going to make it sort of 20% of the width of our little module here. So I'm going to say width 20%. Now we want to make it absolute position so it stays right on the top where we put it there. So we're going to say position, colon, absolute. 
And we can define that absolute position for each of those in a minute when we create them for the before and the after. Okay, well, let's start creating something we can see now. I'm going to drop down a couple and I'm going to grab our class name and the before without the comma there. And we will actually create something for that. And I'll put that down below. And we can open and close some curly brackets and start building our content, which is basically going to be a line. So again, we've got to say content. Colon. And we'll just open some inverted commas. And what do we want inside there? Our content, well, it wants to be in halfway across here. So I'm going to say left 50%. But I want it right on the top for this before bit. I'm going to say top zero because it wants to be right on the top. Now we can create something that we want to see. Now we've told it where we, we want it to go. So let's say border top. And we'll say four picks solid. For argument's sake, I'm going to use, use blue. You can actually see something there. Now it's not quite in the middle there. It's sort of the left corner of it is right in the middle. So we need to sort of scoot it back by about 50%. Or well, we can use a bit of transform translate to do that. Let's put a semicolon. Always put a semicolon before you put a new line of code. If you forget to do that, it won't read the next line. So we're going to use transform. We want to translate. Open some round brackets. And we only really want to translate it by half of its width. So I'm going to say negative 50% and that'll do it. It's right smack in the middle there, which is great. Okay, to save us doing this all over again, I'm going to copy this whole thing and we're going to do the bottom border. So I'm going to copy all of this, Control C, drop down a couple, Control V pasted in there. I'm going to change that to after. You won't see anything because this is right on top of our other one there. So we've got two on top of each other. So again, I want it left 50%. That's correct. But top, I now want this to be bottom zero. There we go. And we're on the bottom there and it's middle there. Okay, to create the little sort of hover effect itself, what I want it to do is start off invisible then feed out from 20% to 100%. So what we need to do is create an actual hover state for this. So I'm going to copy these two classes up here, the before and the after. Control C to copy. I'm going to drop down just below this one. It doesn't really matter where you put it. I tend to put my hover elements just under the regular elements. Now in between the two colons there, not on the end like you think, but in between the two colons with no gaps, you want to write the word hover for both for the before and for the after in between the colons. Now we can open up curly brackets. And where do we want this to go? Well, for a start, I want it to be 100% of the width. It's 20% there, so I want it to be 100%. So I'm going to say width 100%. Now when I hover over, you can see it's shooting up to 100%. And that's pretty much instant. So let's slow it down so it sort of gradually does it. We use that, we do that with a bit of transition duration, which we put in the regular state, not the hover state, for best practice. So we'll say transition dash duration colon. And let's give it sort of three quarters of a second, 0.7 of a second. So I'm going to say 0.7s for 0.7 of a second, or I could put 0.75. Now when we do it, it's a lot more gradual. But I really want it to start off by not being there at all. And then when we hover over, it sort of wants to work its way in. So let's do that with opacity or transparency or see-throughness, if you will. So when we start in the regular version, I'm going to say opacity zero which is completely invisible and we want to bring it back when we hover on it so in the hover state 
we're going to say opacity one which is fully visible and you can increment down 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.3 for different transparency effects so as you can see we can't see it there or as you can't see it's not there and when we hover over on there we go and it's coming in and it's taking 0.7 of a second to come in like that the other thing I want to do really is change it to the color that matches the site so I'm going to get my logo color here I've got a free chrome logo color picker here let's just get this color there it is there's the hex color I'm going to copy that and everywhere it says blue I'm going to put in that hex color so it should be only a couple of places there we go now it's a hex color so it has a hashtag in there and then the hex code let's just copy that and put it there and we should be good to go so if we just publish that now we'll take a look there's our little underlying effect happening and it's the same color, color blue as our logo up there and anything else you want to apply that to you can just give that same class name for instance up here if you wanted it to be on this you could just give that the same class name I think I've still got this open up here let's go in here and we'll give this that class name it's got my old one going on there let's go over to advance in the CSS class let's change it to our new class name here which was DBRD we'll update and yeah, take a look at the page now and that's got our underlying effect on it as well and like I say any module you want to add a button whatever and you want to add that effect to it just give it that class name and that'll work for you so there you go guys there's how to add a nice little animated double border hover effect to your site really easy to do and don't forget that code is going to be down below the video I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.